Hello and welcome to my channel. So Kevin Kanyede, the guy I just covered last week, has escaped from custody. So according to media outlets, he escaped from uh, Muthaiga police station yesterday. So let's just see what they had to say. Red. Puzzling details have emerged surrounding the brazen escape of murder suspect Kevin Kinyanjui Kangede from Muthaiga police station in Nairobi. Kangede is accused of brutally killing his girlfriend at an airport in the US before he fled his home country. Before he fled to his home country, Kenya. A police report documenting the incident that has left the country's security apparatus on the spot indicates that the daring escape happened around 5.30 p.m. on Wednesday in the presence of the station commander who only heard of a commotion as her officers attempted to chase after the fleeing Kangede. According to the report, at around 4 p.m., a man identified as John Mainandegwa arrived at the station and introduced himself as the officer to the officers as a personal lawyer to Kangede and that he wished to talk to his client. The officers are said to have obliged the request and went ahead to remove the suspect from the cells, leaving him alone with his lawyer in a different room that is anti-crime office room number three. After a short while, the prisoner escaped by running away and left the lawyer behind, read the report in part. At the time of the escape, the station commander Chief Inspector Esther Mwishomba was chairing a meeting with the anti-crime personnel and members of inspectorate. So while at her office, she was alerted by a loud noise of officers who were chasing the prisoner along thicker superhighway, but they did not manage to rearrest him. How the suspect outmaneuvered armed officers in broad daylight remains unclear. Four officers, Elijah Kipkorir, James Minor, Anne Wanjiku, and Hassan Saman, who are on duty, have since been arrested as they undergo interrogation on the incident. The advocate, John Minor Ndegwa, is also in police custody. Kangeda is accused of killing a 31-year-old woman based in uh, Whitman, Massachusetts, whose body was discovered inside a vehicle at Boston's Logan Airport in November last year. Following his arrest in Nairobi, Kangeda was presented in court on a miscellaneous application where detectives were granted 30 days to detain him, pending determination on whether he would be extradited to the US where he's wanted for murder charges. I missed my coverage from last week. Let me just play a bit of a recap. Kanyede Kenyanjui, a fugitive who has been in hiding for more than three months, is finally in custody. Kanyede, who is wanted for the murder of Margaret Mbitu at Logan Airport in Boston, the United States of America, was positively and forensically identified by officials from the U.S. Embassy in Nairobi. The 40-year-old suspect who had an Interpol red notice on his head was arrested Monday night at an entertainment joint in Westlands area of Nairobi. An informant told the police of his whereabouts. According to the police, the repatriation of the suspect, who is a dual citizen, began in earnest when officials from the U.S. Embassy in Nairobi forensically identified him. Kangede is suspected to have murdered his lover, Kenyan-born Margaret Mbitu, after requesting her to accompany him to the Logan Airport in Boston. He lured her into the death trap, saying that he was coming back to Kenya for good and he needed to leave Margaret in custody of his car. He was convinced that Kangede planned and murdered Margaret before buying tickets for a 16-hour flight to Nairobi, a move detectives believe was to avoid prosecution. He is said to be extradited to face trial in America. Hassan there was a new development. He was arraigned in court where the magistrate decided to detain him. So I don't know why this guy thought he was going to escape justice. Just the mere fact that uh, he was in constant communication, like I've said, with people who know him. A person obviously from his contact list snitched on him. And I think it's safe to say 30th of uh, January 2024 was the last day Kevin Kanyede will ever be a free man because I don't think he's going to be granted bond given that uh, he's been classified as a high flight risk suspect. And it's right to classify him that way because he fled from the US right after committing his crime, allegedly. But I know people say people are innocent until proven guilty, but there's a lot of evidence pinning him on that 
mother of uh, Margaret. Number one, her body was found in his car, and it's so easy to trace an owner by just checking the registration details. Secondly, the CCTV footage of uh, Logan International Airport could place him in the vicinity of the crime scene. And thirdly, the DNA, I mean, his DNA was found on the crime scene, so he can't dispute that. So I don't know whether he's a little bit insane or whether he's just not smart or whether he just miscalculated how swift the process of apprehending him would be. Because once Margaret's friends and family reported her as a missing person, within 48 hours, they had located her body. And then the guy obviously traveled with a biometric passport, so it was very easy to track his destination. And another thing working against him is the fact that uh, Kenya has an extradition treaty with the US. And even if the Kenyan government was to put up resistance for his extradition, he is a dual citizen. So it would be very easy for the American authorities to override that decision to... So since he's going to be charged with murder, let's just see on a website what he can expect. A law firm based in Boston, Massachusetts, where the crime was committed, so their definition of first degree murder is defined in Massachusetts General Laws, chapter 265, section one, as the crime of killing another person with deliberately premeditated malice afterthoughts, or with extreme atrocity and cruelty, or in the commission or attempted commission of a crime punishable with death or life imprisonment. So when you come down to the punishment for that offense, because first, degree murder is uh, the most serious of all crimes, the sentence is life in prison without a chance for parole. So once convicted, which is most likely what's going to happen to him, he's going to be sent to a maximum security prison. And I don't think he'll have a good time there because number one, he's a foreigner. So he's going to be picked on by the other inmates. And then another thing, he most likely won't have visitors because like I said, he's a foreigner. So he has a limited pool of people who can visit him. And even the few people who know him in the US, I don't think will want to be associated with him. So he's going to be buried alive because he's going to be in prison for the rest of his natural life. So I think the only hope he has is if he repents and asks for salvation and hope that once he transitions to the other side of life, he ends up in heaven. So I must say, I spoke too soon when I said 30th of January 2024 was the last day that Kevin was ever going to be a free man because you can see he has managed to free himself. So in as much as uh, he's at large, he'll have to change his physical appearance and change his identity to be able to move around because I know right now everybody has been put on, on uh, a lot to snitch on him. And it's going to be very easy to detect him, especially if the authorities issue a promise for a cash reward. So it has just complicated his legal issues more because initially he was facing serious charges related to murder in the US, which as we see has severe legal consequences. But now he's added a further charge to his record. And by, okay, now he has added a further charge to his record that is uh, escaping from lawful custody. So this act will lead to additional penalties once they recapture him. And moreover, this escape might be viewed as an admission of guilt, which is potentially going to influence the judicial proceedings against him. Because you see now, if um, they actually manage to capture him and send him to the US, it's going to be very hard for him to convince the jury that he killed Margaret accidentally or maybe killed her as self-defense from her attacks or even claim that he was insane while committing that act. So the other thing he has done is um, he has reduced or completely eradicated the likelihood of him being granted bail while the case is still going on. He's a fugitive, 
most law enforcement agencies worldwide will apply more pressure. So he's definitely not going to have any chance to lead a normal life. So anyway, because this matter has sparked a lot of national interest, let's just see what the netizens had to say. It's been poured so that one thinks the cops were bribed. Another one said, this is an inside job. Another one said, the arrest was part of the plan. Another one says, he's in Ninini Sasa, Kama Hamjui story, what's a kilele? Don't know what that one implies. Another one said, it's sad even to imagine such an escape in a, the full glare of officers, or he was getting treated like a petty offender. No handcuffs outside the cells? Yeah, that's a very good question to ask ourselves. Damn, I need a friend like that, not the fake ones that won't even pick your calls, leave alone, visit you in jail. I think that one is referring to the lawyer. This one says the story is a jabba, so that one suspects fishy activity. Another one says, that's why I love Kenya, my motherland. In Kenya, money buys freedom. So that one suspects the cops were bribed. Another one said money. So that one suspects somebody was bribed. Another one says Zilitembea Mahali. So that one thinks somebody was bribed. One said Tengeneza Pesa bro, it will defend you. So this one believes if you have a lot of money, you can buy your freedom. So if you ask me, I also think somebody was bribed and the amount of money exchanged must have been very substantial. It leads me to the next point. This escape has severely tarnished the image of uh, the Kenyan police force because it raises questions about their competence, their integrity and professionalism, especially in uh, handling high profile international criminal cases. It suggests also potential lapses in uh, security protocols. It suggests there is some oversight and even complicity within the police force, just like the comments suggest, because you can see a lot of people think somebody or some people were bribed. So it also undermines the public trust, just like the comments suggest, and they international confidence in the Kenya law enforcement capabilities. And this incident could also cause a incident could also cause a strain of uh, diplomatic relations between Kenya and the USA. And uh, the incident could also increase pressure from international law enforcement agencies on Kenyan authorities, which could possibly affect future collaborations and assistance. So, well, to the possible reason why Margaret lost her life, like I said last week, somebody is always innocent until proven guilty, but the events that have unfolded since October of last year suggest that Kevin is guilty of uh, murdering Margaret. There's a possibility that I'm wrong. May Margaret continue resting in peace. And just like I said last week, it has over 8 billion people, so it doesn't matter how much your lover or your spouse wrongs you. You can always replace them. There's no need of uh, destroying your life by deleting someone because most likely when Kevin gets captured, he's going to be locked up in a maximum security prison for the rest of his life and that is just as good as being buried alive so let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about this saga like and share this video if you're not subscribed to my channel please consider doing so thanks for stopping by and i'll see you on the next one bye for now